Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this tutorial, we are going to try the different methods of our hash set class. Now we've already seen these methods in our ArrayList tutorials and they will give us the similar output, but we'll just quickly try them again with our hash set. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just create two hash sets of students first. So this is student set one and I'll add some student objects to it. So S1, S2, S3 and S4 and I'll create another hash set of student that is student set two. And again, I'll add some student objects to it. Let's say S3, S5, S6 and S7. So we have one element common over here, which is S3, right? And now I'll just uh, display the content of both of these hash sets. Okay, so I'm going to use the for each method of Java 8 for it. So this is student set one. And similarly, I'll do it for student set two, right? Now, after this, we'll just go on trying the different methods like we saw in our array list. Okay. So the first one is add all, right? So this will add all elements of student set two into our student set one. Okay. Now, after this operation, I'll just display the content of student set one again, just to verify if it has properly added the content. Okay. Now the next operation is remove all. Okay. So I'll say student set one dot remove all student set two. Okay, so this will remove all elements of student set one, which are present in student set two, right? So after this, again, I'm going to display the content of student set one, right? Now, after the remove all operation, uh, we will be left with very few data. Okay, so what we'll do is before we try retain all, we'll just perform add all again. Okay, so that we have some data to display. Okay, so I'll just do add all again and display the content, right? And next we are going to try retain all. Okay. So this will retain all elements of student set one, which are present in student set two, and it will remove everything else. Right? So at the end, our student set one will contain only the elements from student set two, right? And everything else will be removed. Correct. So again, after this, I'll display student set one, right? So now we are left with uh, two more operations and that is contains and contains all. So first we'll try contains. Okay. So again, this will return us a Boolean value. So if student set one contains this particular student, then it will return true else it will return false. Okay. So in this case, it should return true. Okay. Now the next operation is contains all. Now again, this statement will return us a Boolean value. So if student set one contains all elements of student set two, then it will return true else it will return false. Okay. So yeah, that's it guys. These were the operations. And as you can see, these are the same operations, uh, which we saw in our array list class. Okay. So let's save this program and run it. So this is the output. So this is our set one. This is our set two. Then this is after the add all operation. Okay. Now, as you can see over here, it has not added uh, this S3 student again. Okay. So it is working as expected, right? So S3 was present in both student set one and two. So it has not repeated that value, right? Then we have the remove all operation. So in this case, uh, it should remove all elements uh, of student set one, which are present in student set two. So in this case, it should remove three, five, six, and seven. And yes, it has removed all of these uh, values properly. Then we have add all again, just to get some more data. And after that we tried retain all. So this will uh, retain all elements of student set one, which are present in student set two. So it should retain th S3, S5, S6, and S7. And yes, again, it is working properly. Then we have contains. So in this case, we tried uh, student set one dot contains this particular student. Okay. So this is present in student set one. So it should return true. And yes, it is working fine. And then we had contains all. So again, uh, at the end, this is our student set one. And if you can see, then it, it is having all elements uh, which are present in student set two. Okay. They are identical. Correct. So again, this should return us true. And again, it is working fine. So yeah, that's it guys. Now again, uh, all of these methods are working fine because 
uh, we have overridden the hash code and equals method in our student class. Okay. Now, some of these methods may not require the hash code method uh, to function properly. Okay. But uh, as uh, we have seen in the previous tutorial, if we don't override the hash code method, then the hash set will not be able to remove the duplicate values, which will ultimately give us wrong result. Okay. So you don't have to worry about all of these things. Just remember one thing, if you are using a collection and if you are using a custom type, then just override both hash code and equals. And also make sure that you are using the same fields in both hash code and equals methods. Okay. Like in our case, we are using roll number. So you do this much and you don't have to worry about anything else. Okay. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you for watching and see you in my next tutorial.